Glory to God. Blessings to everyone. This is going to be an awesome week. It's going to be an awesome week. Now, whatever you anointed for, you got to be careful that you don't receive a counterfeit of what you anointed for. Like, if you anointed for favor, there will be false favor that will come. If you anointed for wisdom, there's a false wisdom that will come. Apostle James revealed it to us. If you anointed for strength, there's a false strength. Saints, do you know there's something called satanic determination? Where you're energized to work for the devil. As you're joining on, share this broadcast. Invite your followers. It's very powerful what I'm talking about. Very powerful what I'm talking about. Get the gospel out. Share this broadcast. Say, Father, I receive the prophet's reward. If you anointed for something, Satan can send you a counterfeit of what you anointed for. If you anointed for kindness, Satan will have you spend the kindness in the wrong direction. If you're anointed for wisdom, they'll give you a false wisdom. If you're anointed for strength, he'll give you false strength. Meaning, you'll have satanic determination. The determination to go the wrong route. Saints, Ahab had fuel and Elijah had fuel but fuel for different kingdoms. Ahab had fuel for Satan. Elijah had fuel for God. David had fuel to kill Goliath. Saul had fuel to kill his destiny. It's powerful stuff, man. Powerful stuff. You catching this? Say, Father, I receive your wisdom. It's amazing, ain't it? Satanic determination. That's inspiration to go the wrong route. Isn't it crazy? Satanic determination. Satan could encourage you. Build you up and give you the momentum to do what God doesn't want you to do. Saints, have you ever noticed that negative thoughts seem to be more aggressive than divine thoughts? You got to pursue divine thoughts, but negative thoughts will pursue you. Saints, let me just tell you this. The more lukewarm you get, the more wrong thoughts dominate your mind. If you take a note, write that down. Lukewarmness gives wrong thoughts more dominion over you. Lukewarmness gives wrong thoughts more dominion over you. And this is very powerful, saints, because you may not think that you're losing your fire for God, but the more that you lose your fire for God, the more uh, you will start having thoughts mess with you. That's how you know if you're losing your fire for God. Because thoughts will tell on you. Or the overflow or the continuation of wrong thoughts will tell on you. Yeah, let you know if you're drifting. Because the Holy Spirit is supposed to overshadow you. But if wrong thoughts overshadowing you, that means that slowly but surely you're leaving the place of submission. Now let me talk to you real quickly about God's financial system. I just dealt with the mind. Wealth destroys the mental health of demons. Wealth is already on God's schedule for your life. If you didn't watch the beginning of the broadcast, you missed. <laughs> I just gave about 50,000 wisdom doors. Bop, 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 bop. If you didn't watch the beginning, you missed.
Wealth destroys the mental health of demons. Poverty is a satanic disease. Poverty is a satanic disease because it disrespects your ease. It disrespects your ease. So, so you can't live a life of ease because of this spirit. Now, saints, poverty is a demon. When you sow, you destroy this demon's power. When you honor God with your finances, and when I say that, Holy Spirit is going to give you a soul for you to sow in. As you're sowing into your soul that's giving you all, you're breaking the neck of the spirit of poverty. And the more that you sow, you, you ever hear a uh, thousand dollar seeds and things like that? Wh whatever seed level you sow in is the level that you're going to reap. So if you sowing in the hundreds, you're going to reap hundreds. If you sowing in the fives, you reap fives. If you sowing in the twenties, you reap twenties. If you sowing in the thousands, you reap thousands. So poverty is a satanic disease. Is not an empowerment for your destiny. It's the devouring of your destiny. Poverty is. The wisdom angel know how to break the spirit of poverty and what seed to sow to destroy the flow of demonic spirits in your money. Because demons like to sit in your money so that your life would be deprived of joy excitement and accomplishing of the will of God. The wisdom angel knows how to break open in finances so that you won't just be making enough money for you and yourself. <laughs> I know some of y'all want to fight. <laughs> some of y'all writing notes, but you're like, oh. <laughs> Glory to God. The fight. <laughs> now, watch this here. Let's go to... Um Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8. Look what it says right here. Proverbs chapter 8 says this. In verse 10. Receive my instruction and not silver. And knowledge rather than choice gold. Now saints. Knowledge. Instruction came before the gold, the choice gold, and the silver. Here's what's powerful is that instruction and knowledge comes before wealth. So saints, when Jesus started teaching you, he letting you know what he's about to bring to you. There's a magnet that you could discern by the path that he's teaching you. Because watch what the wisdom angel is saying. Receive instruction, receive knowledge, and then the gold, the choice gold, rather than choice gold and, and the silver, which is money. It's saying, receive that before money. So God going to instruct you and God going to give you knowledge. So he's going to teach you about the covenant of wealth, about the prosperity power, about the money cometh grace, Supernatural money moving in your hands. And then he going to instruct you on how to activate it through the seed. Now, saints, also you got to forgive. You can't hold stuff against people. Don't let nobody stop you from moving in your wealth. You got to know how to forgive. Let stuff go and move on mentally. 
And also, you got to have a thankful spirit. If you got a thankful spirit, God could speak to you with more clarity. And you can't be an inconsistent person. Don't invest all your energy in a day and then the next day you lose your whole zeal to serve God. Um, the anointing to replenish yourself is in the seed. The anointing to replenish yourself is in the seed. You notice God was telling Adam to replenish the earth in Genesis. But if you if you catch um, the text, how is he telling him to replenish himself, replenish the earth? He's a sower. So as he's sowing, he's releasing the law of replenishment. The law of replenishing. So saints, when you honor in God, you replenish yourself. Okay, so you build yourself back up. Just through honoring God. That's why you see the dishonorable, they weary themselves. When people are dishonorable and disrespectful to the anointing and the anointed ones, they weary themselves. They, they, they tire out themselves. They create their own fatigue. Because we weren't created to do that. You're not created to do that. So you were created to move in the law of replenishing through sowing. Through honor, through the celebration of what God taught you to do. But instruction and knowledge come before choice gold. Now, what's choice gold? That's the money that you'll choose. That's the plenty of money that you will choose. Meaning like, I, I want $5 million. That's the choice money. Or I want $10 billion. That's the choice gold. Choice gold is what you would pick. Saints, I'm telling you, but Jesus created this beautiful kingdom that you can give and it shall be given unto you. He said, good measure. So, so what's the measure that you saw in? You won't get that measure back, but it's going to be good. It's going to be even better. Press down, shaking together, running over. You see the mindset of Jesus that he want you to enjoy yourself. What did uh, Timothy tell us that he give us all things to richly enjoy? Now, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 11 says this, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that you may, de be, uh, may be desired are not to be compared to it. What you want to see in this text is that you can't compare having wisdom to nothing on the earth. Getting wisdom is more important than you getting anything on this earth. Once you get wisdom, you have the power from God to manifest whatever he want you to enjoy in this life. What did Solomon ask for wisdom? God gave him everything. God gave him sex. God gave him substance. God gave him uh, kingship. God gave him understanding. God gave him rare knowledge. God gave him fame. That's what the Bible said. So he's having all these different things added on to him because God's wisdom is his pursuit. So now God is giving him all these other things apart from that because he has the weapon, wisdom, to manifest everything else. And God trusts him because he, he's pursuing wisdom because that's what he wants. When you want the wisdom of God, he can trust you with wealth. He can trust you with riches and finances and abundance because he know that if you want his wisdom, you want him to instruct your life. Jesus looking for somebody he can instruct. Jesus looking for somebody he can give instructions to. That's what he looking for in the earth. Somebody that will be a vessel of instruction. Saints, I got into the glory of God off of instruction. That's how I got into the glory of God. Off of instructions. It was instructions that released fresh oil. Saints, why every day I get on and minister fresh stuff? Because of instructions. I'm obeying the instructions of the Holy Ghost. I'm an instructor myself. 
There's nothing that Jesus can't have from my body, soul, spirit. Saints, don't try to worship God with your body, but betray him with your mind. My God. Seredu ranta parada. Repesete korapa karamasaka. Repeserede. Verede koranta paradaya. Don't try to worship Jesus with your body and betray him with your mind. It ain't going to work. Bipolar servanthood will destroy your sound mindedness. Bipolar servanthood will destroy your sound mindedness. And God can't give you his money bags and make you rich if you mentally ain't in a good place. Because then you're going to become a Judas towards God with that money. That money ain't going to get where it's supposed to get. The finances that come into get to your hand don't be for you most times. The finances coming to your hand be for the work of God. It be, it be, for, it be seed to sow. God will give you the money that you want to enjoy when you master the seed to sow. Now, saints... So it's telling you that wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that you may be desired cannot be compared to it. Now, saints, I want you to see this. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17 says, I love them that love me. So wisdom has a preference. I'm going to love you, but you got to love me. If you don't love me, then fine, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, you don't love me. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Look at the wisdom angel. Look look how she thinks. To the left, to the left. Look how the wisdom angel thing. She said, If you love me, I'ma love you. And those that seek me early shall find me. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. She said, those that seek me early shall find me. This not just early in the morning. This is before trouble happens in your life. Oh, my God. See, saints, early is a realm. You ever thought about it like this? Early is a realm. So early is a realm where God's saying, before anything takes place, you seek in me. Before anything goes bad, you seek in me. Before your finances look jacked up, you seek in me. Before your health look bad, you seek in me. Before you get attacked, you seek in me. See, the early is before stuff pop off. See, saints, if you can cry out for God with hunger and, and appetite and desire before anything happened, he, he know you're a real one. Because most over uh, most percentage of people only uh, express desperation because they're in a desperate situation. But can you express desperation just because you want the Lord, you want his will, you want his plan to be fulfilled in your life? And you want what God wants you to have. If Jesus wants you to, Jesus wants you to have riches. Not if. Jesus died for you to be rich. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 tells you that he died for you to be rich. He became poverty that, uh, he became poor that through his poverty you might be rich. So Jesus wants you to be rich. That's not a question or a debate. See, wealth is not a discussion. It's a demonstration. You take a note, write that down. Wealth is not a discussion, it's a demonstration. Not everybody going to have the demonstration because not everybody willing to sow. The demonstration is, is a privilege. Only those that are hungry and thirsty. Now, saints, for the Holy Spirit to anoint you to sow, you at a higher level than a believer. Because believers, they, they can believe to a certain degree, but they still can hold back. They still can hold back. 
But when you're anointed to sow, you at a higher level than most believers. You, you more advanced. When you honoring God financially, you more advanced than people that's in prayer. They still begging God, Lord, show me something, show me something, do something for me, do something for me, deliver me from this bill. You are already further than them. You moving with angels now. You activated the kingdom. You bringing the glory down. Seed sowers are glory carriers. If you take a note, write that down. Seed sowers are glory carriers. Wealth is not a discussion, it's a demonstration. And wealth is a deliverance. Wealth is a deliverance. So, wealth is God delivering you from this world system. Wealth is God setting you free from bondage and slavery. And saints, don't live your whole life and not receive the wealth that Jesus done paid for you to have. Saints, Jesus paid for you to have wealth transferences. One after the next. He died for you to have it and then he rose up from the dead to let you know that he was a seed. He rose up. You got that same power of resurrection on your seed that you sow into his gospel that you going to raise up. Those seeds are going to raise up into wealth and riches being in your house. Psalm 112 verse 3. Look at this. I love them that love me. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17. I love those that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. So the Lord going to give you answers if you, you ask for wisdom and understanding. He's going to give you answers. So he's not going to leave you without answers. Look at uh, Proverbs 8, 18. Riches and honor are with me. Yes, durable riches and righteousness. It says riches and honor are with me. Durable riches and righteousness. You can't move with the wisdom angel. You can't be a sower. You can't be in honor towards God and not become rich. It's impossible. It's impossible. Proverbs 8.18 8, and Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 is revealing the mantle of wealth to you. It's revealing the mantle of wealth to you.